to introduce the We the People, a black plan to end the HIV epidemic and end HIV in, in America. Uh, first, I would like to introduce our president and CEO of the Black AIDS Institute as we introduce this plan, Ronnie Copeland. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning. So I want to um, welcome everyone to this really kind of special event to announce um, our initiative uh, we the People, a Black Plan to End the HIV Epidemic. Uh, my name is Rania Copeland, and I'm the President and CEO of the Black AIDS Institute. I'm honored to be here today, um, joined by Alabama State Representative and Black AIDS Institute Board Member, I'm Laura Hall, Al Alabama NAACP State President, Bernard Similton, Southern Christian Leadership Foundation uh, President and CEO, Bernice Frazier, and Alabama State AIDS Director, Sharon Jordan. And we're also very excited to have Dr. Harris here from the State Health Department. When we thought about where we should launch this initiative, this new nationwide initiative, um, we couldn't think of a better place than the birthplace of the civil rights movement. Um, ending HIV will mean taking the lessons and strategies birthed by the civil rights leaders um, and actually have them actualize um, here when it comes to ending HIV. HIV activism, which really has given us these tools to end HIV, was really birthed on the back of the civil rights movement. And actually having that actualize um, and ending HIV uh, is our plan. Um, in 2011, Science Magazine uh, named the use of antiretroviral medicine um, to prevent new HIV infections as uh, the breakthrough of the year. These, med these medications were a game changer in HIV prevention. Uh, the development of treatment as prevention, PrEP, um, or treatment, uh, the, the advent of uh, treatment as prevention and pre-exposure prophylaxis ushered in the concept of ending the HIV and AIDS epidemic. It was the first time you really heard this uh, term. Uh, by combining effective treatment for people who are living with HIV, along with uh, simple and uh, easy biomedical prevention tools for people who are HIV negative, we could ultimately uh, break the back of the HIV and AIDS epidemic. And so it's an amazing thing to be able to say that we have the medical tools to end an epidemic that has uh, killed over 700,000 Americans. In this February's State of the Union address, Trump announced this goal to end the AIDS epidemic in the U.S. by 2030, an audacious plan. And while many HIV and AIDS activists, communities of color, communities most impacted by the HIV and AIDS epidemic um, were understandably concerned by this initiative, uh, we at Black AIDS Institute um, think that this is a uh, reasonable goal and that something, it's something that we are very excited to engage in. But we know the devil is in the details, and ensuring that black Americans um, and black people in these jurisdictions are centered um, is going to be critically important. And so Black AIDS Institute is partnering with civil rights and social justice partners for the implementation of our community-based um, plan, We the People, a black plan to end HIV. We're emphasizing four key areas in our 10-year initiative that we know are the drivers of HIV. Having these biomedical tools to end HIV are critically important, but they mean nothing and have meant not much for the past eight years if we don't actually respond to what drives HIV today. And so for us, our four pillars are addressing racism, sexism, transphobia, and xenophobia that fuels HIV today, providing access to comprehensive quality and affordable health care, and then designing and funding programs that address key social issues that impact HIV outcomes of black communities, homelessness, poverty, substance use, incarceration, and mental health. And lastly, building the capacity of black communities uh, to be the change agents to end HIV. Over the next three months, we are going to be uh, going to uh, states and jurisdictions within Trump's plan to hold town halls to um, really engage black communities in these efforts to, plan, um, efforts to end HIV. We'll be um, engaging them, listening to what are the concerns and the challenges within their local communities, what are solutions to respond to the HIV epidemic, and building out a 10-year plan that we will be announcing um, or be publishing in February 2020 to um, align with National Black HIV and AIDS Awareness Day. The underpinning of the administration's plan is surveillance data that shows around 50% of the HIV epidemic is in 48 counties, Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico and seven states that have 
heavy rural burdens. Alabama is one of those states. We also know that 60% of the HIV, of the black HIV epidemic is within those jurisdictions. And so ending the HIV epidemic in the US means ending the epidemic amongst black Americans. Um, there's no question that focusing on PrEP and treatment as prevention um, with the highest HIV burden makes sense, right? Let's focus on where these, the geographic impact is. But that is not going to be the only thing that is going to allow us to be successful, which is where the Black AIDS Institute's plan comes into place. We know that nationally, 43% of new HIV cases are among black people. Um, black men who have sex with men represent almost 80% of the uh, uh, black epidemic. And we don't even have accurate data on the impact HIV has on trans people, though it's estimated that, almost, that more than half of black trans women are living with HIV. If a plan to end HIV doesn't explicitly respond to the communities that are most impacted, then it's doomed to fail. In Alabama, which is one of the seven states um, that's a part of the administration's plan, black people make up only 26% of Alabama residents, but black people are 64% of, of Alabamians who are living with HIV. In 2016, only 1,100 um, PrEP prescriptions were filled amongst people in Alabama. And uh, let's see. And the counties with the highest HIV incidence for black people were Montgomery, where we're standing today, Madison, Jefferson, and Mobile. In a state that is home of the Tuskegee uh, experiment, which is the most touted example of medical racism uh, in the country, probably amongst black Americans, it's critically important that we're developing strategies um, that respond to the specific needs of black people that inhibit us to actually utilize these tools that can end HIV. Insufficiently addressing these, um, uh, these drivers is where we are today, which is why we have a pretty kind of stagnant number of new infections every, every year and increases in some significant populations such as black men. For this administration, they uh, allocated almost $300 million in this fiscal year 2020 to start implementing this plan. And it's an exciting um, initiative, but in the haste to get the plan off the ground, um, black communities have not been able to be engaged in the process, and health departments and Centers for AIDS Research, which is a, Center for AIDS Researchers, which are a critical component of these plans, have not been able to engage community in a way that we know is related to best practices and success. Black AIDS Institute has been working with different jurisdictions to try and ensure community engagement is centered in every plan. We worked with um, uh, the state of Florida and presented to their HIV Managers Conference about resources to end HIV in black communities. We've done a work plan with some of our local affiliates um, to develop and implement ending the epidemic strategies in their local jurisdictions. Uh, we know within Miami Cape, Miami-Dade County, for example, their local health department included utilizing their local um, Black Treatment Advocate Network, which is an affiliate of the Black AIDS Institute, in their local planning and implementation process. Uh, within uh, 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 Melbourne, Florida, we also uh, had uh, our uh, group of folks, our group of affiliates who engaged with the health department to ensure that resources were going with Black communities. We worked with uh, affiliates and with uh, leaders in Georgia in ensuring that um, the black voice was not left out in the pilot plan process that happened just recently um, within Fulton County. We've worked with health departments and folks in Louisiana, Mississippi, and now in Alabama to ensure and center black communities. Our initiative is mobilizing and engaging black leaders, communities across the country to build our power to ensure that we're not only having a seat at the table, but when we're talking about ending HIV, that it's our table. Black communities are the most, one of the most impacted communities in ensuring that there's proper representation and utilization of the uh, skills and ideas within black communities is really important, is critically important in our success. Um, we're here to end the epidemic in the ways that we've seen that have successfully gotten us to where we are today. We've made such progress when it comes to ending HIV. To be able to talk about having an end to HIV in an epidemic that started less than 40 years ago is really a public health um, uh, anomaly. Uh, and so to be able to actually end it is going to be utilizing those strategies that we've used in the past to be successful in that. 
um, we look forward to doing that here in Alabama. We look forward to working with civil rights leaders and organizations that have really been critical in creating change in states um, and in jurisdictions and really across the country and making this a community-wide initiative with investment and engagement. Uh, so we're excited to be here. Uh, we will be launching uh, tomorrow with uh, be doing grand rounds at the uni at UAB, uh, speaking around how to make sure that our Centers for AIDS researchers, uh, research institutions are actively engaging in um, strategies to end HIV in Black America, uh, and then we'll be hosting a town hall back here in Montgomery to really engage Black community and get best practices around what a plan, a ten-year plan specifically for Alabama should Alabama should include for various parts of our Black community. I'm excited to be here, um, and I will have uh, Representative Laura Hall come up and speak next. What do you say? So I am honored to be a part of the Black AIDS Institute and a member of the board, mm -hmm. and, and as one who has been uh, involved with AIDS work, which started about 1992 at the time when my son was diagnosed with AIDS, and the challenge that we faced as a family uh, because it was an early time and the, the stigma was a lot greater than it is today. Certainly it was great, but not as it is today. And it was that, that is how I really became a member and get, became involved with the Black AIDS Institute because Phil Wilson, who was the executive director at that time, was speaking at the Democratic National Convention. And I walked up to the young man that I knew that was working the stage and says, tell that guy right there I want to speak to him. So I am standing here before you uh, talking about the work of AIDS, uh, the work that I've done with AIDS. From that time on until today, I have uh, spent a lot of my time making sure that we had funding in the state's budget as it relates to addressing the issue of AIDS. And I'm certainly excited about the fact that we're working to end the epidemic because we know that the state of Alabama and Montgomery County, as well as Madison County, which is one of the counties that I represent, it has very high numbers. So I am here to face and work the challenge. I've asked the, these individuals to stand with me because Representative Lawrence is a member of the legislature. So when we bring the budget, he has a key role in, in addressing the budget. I've asked Dr. Harris and Ms. Jordan to stand with me because the health department, when I have issues and concerns as it relates to how we're spending the money, they're the individuals that I go to. And I think that it is also appropriate that we are here in the state of Alabama, we are addressing the issue of ending the epidemic, that I would give them an opportunity to have something to say about this issue and how they feel that we can move forward together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative Hall. Uh, it really is an honor to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation to include us. Uh, we really do want to be part of this. The, the most striking thing about the end the HIV epidemic program is that it actually is possible. Um, we have never had the tools before to actually end the epidemic, and yet now we do today. Um, I uh, started as a medical student in the mid-1980s and went on to, uh, to become an HIV provider for about 20 years. As a brand new student, um, we honestly had very little to offer people who had HIV disease. We did palliative care and we did the best for them and we got them to make preparations for uh, an illness that we were totally un unable to treat or, or equipped to take care of. And now, today, we have the opportunity to completely eliminate it. Um, we have the tools. We understand that um, treatment as prevention is the most powerful way to do that. Much of the public today still doesn't understand that a person who's infected with HIV but is on effective antiretroviral therapy uh, cannot transmit the disease. It's untransmissible and we need that message to be out. And we know that we have medication now for folks who might be at risk uh, for HIV that can completely prevent them from acquiring HIV in, in virtually every case, and that message needs to be out. So at Public Health, we want to do our best to partner with folks in the community. We, we certainly appreciate the Black AIDS Institute and the, the work that they're doing around this. We understand at the health department, we've not always had um, the best relationships with the communities that we're trying to reach. We have a historical legacy that we are still struggling to overcome, uh, and we need your help to do that. I, I would humbly ask you to please guide us and help us and instruct us as we try to reach out to those folks who are most at risk in the state of Alabama. Thank you very much for including us. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Again, I'm Sharon Jordan, uh, Director of the Division of HIV Prevention and Care with the State Health Department. 
as uh, Dr. Harris has said, this is a new era in HIV in our state and in the country. Uh, we have a very aggressive goal to reduce or to end HIV or reduce it by 50% in five years and 75% in 10 years. As it's been said, it is doable. And we do expect to partner with organizations across the state of Alabama. Now, I will say this is a good time for the Black AIDS Institute to be here because we are at the beginning of developing our plan. We're in the process of engaging stakeholder panels, and we certainly would love to have your input in helping direct activities for the plan. Now, it's a good time. It's a good time because we've seen a lot of progress over the years. When I started in HIV, I started at the beginning. So I've seen what the beginning looks like, and I see now the hope that is there. I see people living longer. I see the quality of life extended for many individuals. There are a lot of new tools and strategies available. Uh, new biomedical strategies, uh, new uh, tools such as PrEP in order to end the epidemic, to reduce new infections, and we want to find ways in, to incorporate this into our plan. Again, we're excited about the opportunity to work with the Black AIDS Institute. It is an organization that has been around for some time and we have worked with them on several other issues. So we want to continue that tradition to make sure that the town hall meetings are represented in the highest burden areas in our plan. Again, it was mentioned about four uh, large cities, but we're also going to look at the emerging counties where the infection is increasing. And a lot of those counties are rural counties, the Lowndes County, the Macon County, uh, so we have about 13 of those counties that we want to make sure that they are included in the plan. And of course, special populations. Uh, we want to look at uh, African Americans. We want to look at the uh, Hispanic population. We need to look at the homeless population. Because a lot of times those populations are left out. So again, thank you for this opportunity and we look uh, forward to partnering with you. Good morning. Good morning. As stated before, my name is Representative Kelvin Lawrence. I represent Lowndes County, Wilcox County, parts of Montgomery, and parts of Otago. And I'm here today in support of the Black Aid Institute simply because most of the area that I represent is rural areas. And oftentimes, rural areas kind of get overlooked or the, the awareness and outreach doesn't really get to the people that really need it. So I'm here to stand in support with, with this organization and State Health Department along with, with Dr. Dr. Harris and I call her Dr. Hall as well <laughs> to help just, just spread the word and, and, and to, to let people know what's available um, and also I serve on the um, general fund budget that it actually funds um, state departments, um, state agencies so um, I will use my influence there to try to help to make sure that the resources and funds are available to help push this initiative to make sure that our people at least know what's available for them and to just spread the word and be educated on what HIV is along with the, the remedies and solutions that are out there to help um, just kind of alleviate this dreaded disease. So I thank you. I look forward to continuing to work with, with you and, and everyone else that has a part in helping us eradicate this disease. So you see what I did? I took over your press conference, and that was, <laughs> but not you know, really. What I did, I wanted to make sure that we had the opportunity to know that there are individuals from the Black Caucus and, were the, and also individuals from the legislature who are very much, would be very much a part of it and help, helping us to have these town hall meetings, et cetera. Dr. Scott, and, I mean, Dr. Harris and Ms. Jordan, certainly, utilizing the fact that they are members of the health department and they have an opportunity to hear the kinds of things that we need to do and how we can go about doing it and making sure that they're included in that process. So thank you for this opportunity. 
when we thought about who should be here for this launch, um, we wanted to make sure, like I said earlier, that we had um, some of the iconic civil rights um, institutions um, here today. To end HIV uh, in black communities, it means engaging all sectors of the black community. That means engaging faith leaders. It means engaging civil rights organizations, um, social justice organizations in that. And so I'm very happy to be able to um, bring up the NAACP state president, Bernard Simulton. My name is Bernard Simulton, and I'm president of the Alabama Conference of the NAACP. And we first of all want to thank uh, BAI for taking this initiative to come to Alabama to essentially tell us what we already know. We already know that there's a epidemic uh, in the state of Alabama, maybe not as bad as some of the other epidemics that we see, but uh, there are still too many people in 2019 that are uh, contracting HIV when there is such uh, much, so much cure for, uh, not cure, but treatment for uh, HIV, and people can live long lives. But the other part of that is the prevention method. You know, it's ways to prevent it. And the NAACP, through our national office, all the way down to our local units, uh, engage with our communities and inform them, and educate them on how to prevent uh, these dreaded disease from affecting them individually and, of course, the communities in which they come from. Now, you've heard Representative Hall talk about uh, the, the legislative uh, efforts, uh, but it takes really a village to prevent and to eradicate this disease. It takes, uh, first of all, uh, individuals that uh, engage in those activities that increase their possibilities of uh, contacting, I mean, contracting the disease. It takes uh, education from the people who provide the cures, uh, the treatment, for not the cures, but the treatment for the disease. And it take advocates like ourselves to go around into the communities and to inform people that you know they can live a normal life if they do contract the disease, and to remove the stigmas that have been associated with HIV for many many years. And we're not saying that um, uh, you sh could um, uh, totally uh, prevent it, but we. Well, it can be totally prevented because there are tools, as you've already heard, that are there that can can uh, prevent it. And one of the things that uh, uh, we certainly need to do is uh, uh, talk about, uh, when we talk about education, we need to talk about educating our communities. Uh, we need to educate uh, those in our, uh, our churches, those uh, pastors and uh, religious leaders to get them involved and to let them know that, you know, if they can talk about it in their congregation and they will not be ridiculed because it's something that uh, uh, is in the community and that they need to uh, be a part of it. And if we look at the statistics uh, across the nation where I think it was about 30, uh, about 47 percent of the uh, HIV deaths occur in the southern states and uh, Alabama is one of those states where uh, uh, you know, the death rate is high for a person that uh, contracts HIV. And what do we do to uh, help those individuals? How do we help them? Uh, again, the information is there, but how do we get it to the people? How do we meet them where they are, you know, uh, and let them know that uh, there are treatments out there and it's not costly, it's free. And those are things that we need to communicate to our, our communities, to our leaders. And I want to say that the NAACP uh, is proud to join with BAI and other organizations to say that we are committed to doing what we can and whatever is required of us to make sure that the information is out into the community. I uh, spoke with my son last night, who's a ER doctor in um, uh, Atlanta area, 
And uh, he shared with me some of the things that, you know, that they uh, tell the people when they come in and how they treat them. And, you know, you go through the process of um, uh, determining what they have and you uh, put them on a regimen in which they can be treated for the disease. And he also shared with me, he says, uh, that I'm from a rural small town in Mississippi. And uh, he shared with me, he said, well, you know, if you live in that small town and you had uh, HIV, then would you be willing to, you know, go to the local hospital and let them know? And chances are probably not. But the other part of that is if you were, then where would you go? Because there's nothing in that local community that can treat this particular disease. So you would have to travel probably uh, uh, the closest place, probably Tupelo, Mississippi, somewhere like that, where you get effective treatment as well as doing follow-up with your doctors. And uh, so those are the kind of things that we need to um, uh, make people aware of in our communities and just make sure that this disease is eradicated. And uh, I think it's, uh, it can be eradicated by 2010, but it's going to take all of us working together to educate, to remove the stigma, and to just uh, make sure that those who um, do come in contact with the disease, that they are well aware and they are prepared to get the treatment and whatever they can do or whatever is required of them to make sure that they live a long, uh, happy life afterwards. But the NAACP certainly is committed and I can speak for on local level as well as on the national level we are committed to eradicating this dreadful disease. Thank you very much. I'd like to bring up Bernice Frazier, the uh, president and CEO of the Southern Christian Leadership um, Foundation. Um, she has been a longtime supporter of Black AIDS Institute and working across the country really to end HIV. I would like to first thank each of you for taking the time to join us this morning, for this is a matter of grave importance. My name is Bernice Frazier, and I am the president and CEO of the National Southern Christian Leadership Foundation. The future of our communities as it relates to HIV. But first, just a quick history of the foundation. We were founded in 1966 by Harry Belafonte and Sidney Poitier to address a programmatic outreach in the civil rights movement. Under their leadership, the organization raised funds to assist with bail for arrests, arresting youth in Birmingham and other civil disobedience causes and human rights during the 60s. It should be noted that during this time frame, we were one of the few charities created with sole purpose of addressing African American causes. We are proud to note that the foundation works in conjunction with partners and affiliates to affect the lives of all Americans, which includes a current partnership with the Center for Disease Control PACT initiative, which is partnering and acting together. Mr. Belfonte has been continuous on the front lines of HIV justice, campaigning for elimination of HIV in 2001 as he served on the board of AMFAR in 2005 and was a major force in the We Are the World, just to name a few areas in historical perspective. The SEL Foundation's philosophy is quantum responsibility, which means individuals are educated, inspired, and empowered to understand the true definition of influence, to understand their personal power, and to muster the courage to apply said power to the pursuit of civil and human rights in all areas. As an organization that has demonstrated a record of working within grassroots communities on a daily basis, SEL Foundation recognizes that various factors add to the challenge of standing in the gap for HIV prevention. Education provided to people of color and African Americans in particular is our primary focus in the addressing health care barriers and related implications. The SEL Foundation is a part of a huge movement to bring awareness to individuals across the nation regarding HIV and AIDS epidemic. We have established an initiative that addresses education, prevention, and testing. Silence is sinful health disparities initiative. Within the process, the foundation seeks to improve the circumstances so that all segments of society will have the opportunity and tools to make a significant leap 
forward into the future with quality living in the present. With our program efforts addresses everyone, we are focused on African American communities that are affected in most from this devastating disease, particularly in the South uh, community. That's why we are proud today to join the Black AIDS Institute to launch this comprehensive 10-year plan, We the People, a plan to end HIV in America. You see, the goal, as it has been talked upon earlier, is to work in, conjun in conjunction with those directly affected and organizations doing the groundwork to detect, treat, educate, and prevent HIV, that a quantum responsibility in its truest form. We realize that as a black people, we are leading in all things that have disparities, especially in the areas of health. We agree that time and time again, our black and brown communities in this country have been and continues to be plagued by the systematic failings of an ineffective and poorly regulated medical system from the top down and the bottom up. We are also aware that the current administration leads the charge in patent racism, homophobia, transphobia, sexist, xenophobia, indeed all phobias. <laughs> Therefore, we understand that we as a people must take charge, stand up, and drive to the end this dreaded epidemic, understanding clearly that HIV is an equal opportunity offender. It doesn't care what your color of your skin, your religion, your sexual orientation, whether you are wealthy or poor. So why are we here today? Not just to tell you what is wrong, but to give you a solution to resolve the problem, which is the We Are the People, a plan to end HIV in America. We have seen on local levels, low budgets managed by the wrong hands have failed our people on a micro level. This could truly decimate communities of color, particularly those right here in the South. The rate of exposure and diagnosis of HIV in black folks is the highest in certain geographical areas. We are the most at risk for the virus, and it is not an accident that this occurs. This is an opportunity for the people to be able to directly delegate what is needed and receive those resources to tend this epidemic without hesitation. In the mighty words of Mr. Belafonte related to HIV and AIDS, poverty, inequality, and, and discrimination have to also be addressed in the AIDS debate. I close with another quote from one of our founders, and that is, again, Mr. Belafonte, and he quotes, each and every one of you have the power, the will, and the capacity to make a difference in the world in which you live, ending quote. Won't you join us with us? Won't you join with us and embrace this 10-year plan to eliminate this disease? Join us as we leap into quantum responsibility with our sister organization, Black AIDS Institute. And thank you for listening to me this morning. With that, I do want us to end on one more quote because we are uh, in the state of Alabama uh, in the Civil Rights Movement, and I wanted to just bring up this piece that we brought up to our Melbourne chapter, a um, uh, quote from Dr. King. A final challenge that we face as a result of our great dilemma is to be ever mindful of enlarging the whole society and giving it a new sense of values as we seek to solve our particular problem. Let us, therefore, not think of our movement as one that seeks to integrate the Negro into all the existing values of American history. Let us be those creative dissenters who will call our beloved nation to a higher destiny, to a new plateau of compassion, and to a more noble expression of humanness. Thank you all so very much for being here. Uh, we'd like to open it up for questions now. I have a question. Um, if that's open to anyone that would like to answer, just step up to the podium. Um, why now, why does it, it seem more possible than ever to have this initiative being, to have AIDS eradicated in, in 10 years? And we talk about like, the funding, specifically, like why that's more possible. I think now. in 2011 is when we probably started really first talking about ending the HIV epidemic, when we um, saw the um, advent of pre-exposure prophylaxis. Um, and then from there, we've kind of been taking some um, steps. So we got our first national HIV and AIDS strategy, um, I think a few years before that, that uh, helped impact and give a strategy for the entire nation. But I would really say that um, the reason we are talking about it in a very different way is because of advocates really advocating with this administration to be the uh, folks who can end HIV. 
uh, they have, the administration has allocated a significant amount of money, close to $300 million just in fiscal year 2020 alone towards this. Um, we know that when you think about, when you look at the mathematical modeling, that if we can first look at the jurisdictions where we see half of uh, new HIV infections happening, that we can greatly um, decrease uh, new infections across the country. And so really it's been because of funding, it's been because of the new tools that we've seen, um, and this um, initiative really allows us to focus and target in on certain jurisdictions um, to be able to be successful. Tell me about the town hall, give me the, the information on that that's happening in Montgomery. I'm going to switch Town Hall will be tomorrow evening at the Rosa Parks Museum because as we said we wanted to connect it to the overall civil rights as we see the HIV is a civil rights issue and it will be from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, food will also be provided. We encourage everyone from the community, especially communities that are most impacted, to be there. Uh, and again, 6 to 9 p.m. at the uh, Hope in no, I'm sorry. 6 to 9 p.m. at the Rosa Parks Museum. And kind of what, what's the, the purpose of that? What do you hope to accomplish at the Town Hall meeting tomorrow? Um, we want to educate the community on what this plan looks like, uh, what the administration's plan looks like, along with understanding what the Black AIDS Institute plans to do here in the state of Alabama, <clears throat> along with then also hearing from the community what are the concerns, what are the problems, so we can better, as we move to have our plan come out next year, um, we want to make sure that it is engaging community throughout, and this is one of the methods in which we are doing so. And are you guys based, where are you guys based out of? So the Black AIDS Institute is headquartered in Los Angeles, okay. California. Uh, a couple of our staff members, including myself, live okay. in Atlanta, Georgia, okay. and we have chapters across the country, including a, a BTAN chapter, the Black Treatment Advocates Network, uh, okay. which is headquartered in Selma in the state of Alabama. Okay, so this is kind of an extension of the, the Selma chapter? Yes. Okay. Um, the, the chapter for the state of Alabama is statewide. Gotcha. It's not too much to ask. Uh, can we have all the speakers please uh, stand and uh, have a picture up here? That's it.